What is going on beautiful people? Welcome to another episode of A Narcissist Explains. I am Lee Hammack, the diagnosed self-aware narcissist. In today's episode, I'm going to be talking about how narcissists see their presence, like them being with you as enough. They see them being with you as love, as appreciation, as affection. Thank you. Stay tuned. Appreciate it. Hey, honey. How, how do I look? You look okay. Only okay. I spent I spent hours getting ready. This is your favorite. This is your favorite outfit of mine. Favorite outfit of mine. Like when have I ever said I liked anything that you wear? When we first met, you said I like when you wear that that blue shirt, and I, I have the blue shirt on, so it, it doesn't mean anything. It, it doesn't mean anything now. Oh yeah. I, when we first met, I was just saying stuff to make you feel good about yourself. I mean, that's that's what we're supposed to do, right? Yeah, I guess. But you're also supposed to keep doing it. Why do we need to keep doing it? Like, I'm here, Art. Now, why, why do you feel like I need to give you compliments and tell you I love you and support you and stuff? I'm here, Art. Now, is it not, is it not enough? Whoa, why, why are you getting so upset? Because you're always complaining. You're so needy. You're always in your feelings. I'm not doing this. I'm not doing that. What else do you want from me? Silence. That For me, silence. That's what I love from you. I love when you're silent. I'll just be quiet then. So, welcome back, beautiful people. Like I said before, I'm, if you're new here, I'm Lee Hammack, the Diagnosed Stuff for Nurses. And you see my skits. I get into these skits, y'all. I get right into these skits. I got mentioned in the uh, the news site Upworthy. So Upworthy wrote an article about me. I'm going I'm to I'm tag it in the... Uh, it's in my bio. The link is in my bio for it already. But they wrote an article about the self-aware diagnosed narcissist using TikTok and social media to raise awareness, which is pretty cool, y'all. Um, but yeah, as you can see by that skit right there, narcissistic people don't like to pay you compliments. And one of those reasons, one of those reasons behind why they don't want to pay you compliments is because they feel like paying you compliments could blow your head up to the point because it could fill your ego to the point where you don't need them anymore, where they can leave you. The insecurities are bubbling to the surface. Uh, you, when you know you looking just fantastic. You don't, you know, hair did, nails did, whatever you got on, male, female, non-binary, whatever, you know, whatever, you know, whatever you are, <laughs> whoever you are, whoever you are, whomever, who, you know. What if you identify as? Uh, you looking good, and they usually like, hey, how do I look? And they just like, huh, you okay. Or they find something wrong with your outfit. People wouldn't try to nag you all the time to get you to, you want validation from this person. The per this is the person that you love and care about so much, or it could be one of your parents or whatnot. You're looking for validation. You're looking for some type of reassurance, and they're not going to give it from you because it's a power move to withhold that from you. It is a power tactic to withhold that from you. I know I, I know it sounds stupid, but it's absolutely 100% is. It's an ability of the, it's a, a power, it's like a, a human, it's like a, a narcissistic, you know, it's like a power trip to be able to look at you in your face and tell you that you don't look good. It's a power technique to be able to talk to you and tell you that you don't look good. It's, it's like, I'm telling you, or it's just to ignore all the work you put into looking better. All of the work you put in to getting a better job, all you work you put in to pass that test, to graduate from college, to, pass, to graduate from high school, all of the work you've done to try to appreciate, to be good in sports, they will hold that back from you. So you keep working hard for that validation. And if you, if this is one of your parents, no, it's no shocker that you ended up in a relationship where you're trying to get validation from another narcissistic person. No shocker that you ended up here in a relationship with a narcissist that you, who won't validate you because guess who didn't validate you growing up? Mom or dad. Someone in a, someone along those lines didn't validate you enough growing up and things like that. So you have to be the one to empower yourself. You have to be the one to be strong enough that you don't need validation from this person because they're not going to give it to, them, give it to you. They're just not. And if they do... It's going to be every once in a while. It's not going to be an all-time thing. It's going to be every once in a while. They're going to shock you and validate you. That's where intermittent reinforcement or breadcrumbing comes in. If comes in, if they don't do it a lot, when they do, it, whenever they do do it, whenever they do it, <laughs> it's going to it's going to weigh more. It's going to mean more. A hug means so much more if you haven't gotten a hug in three months, in six months. The words "I love you." Means so much more when you haven't heard them all year. You know, getting your cheeks clapped feels so much better sometimes if you hadn't had your cheeks clapped in months. You see what I'm saying? Intermittent reinforcement. They do just enough to keep you. 
they give you less than the bare minimum for most of the times. So when they come to the bare, they get most of the times the narcissist is going to give you less than the bare minimum, right? So whenever they give you the bare minimum or just above it, it's going to feel like way more than the bare minimum. It's going to feel like way more than the bare minimum. And people will notice that too, because you'll get excited about them telling you that they, they, they love you. Like, you look too excited about, you know, your person telling you that they love you. Oh, I haven't heard that in years. So I was just surprised. What? The reason I do a lot of these videos, y'all, is to show y'all what y'all are tolerating, what you're putting up with. For what? For what gain? It has to be a net positive gain. Why are you tolerating this behavior for so long? I feel I mean, this is not me blaming you. This is uh, this is me wanting to ask you. This is me wanting you to ask yourself this question: Why are you tolerating this behavior when you know that there's someone out there that can give you better than this? Or do you know? That's the thing right there. Most narcissists want to convince you that you are unworthy of receiving this love, this care, this affection, these compliments. They want you to feel like you're unworthy of it, so you always have to work hard to get the bare minimum or below. You're scratching for, you're fighting for scraps. You're fighting for scraps at the table of love and affection. For what gain? You fight so hard for, to hear the words, I love you. For what? For what? If, or what are their actions saying? Because as, as a narcissist, you hear the end of the video, I'm here, art not. That means they love you because their presence is enough. Me being here means that I love you. Me helping pay these bills or whatever, whatever the, whatever, whatever the dynamic is in your household means that I love you and I care about you and I'm affectionate, affectionate towards you. You know, affectionate, affectionate infectious towards you. <laughs> affectionate towards you. You see, presence is everything. That's how you, I know you. What, what is your love language? My love language is physical touch. My love language is gifts. Where is the affirmation? Is mine. Narcissists think your love language is being here. It, narcissists think your love language is just them being here. Even though they're not, even though they're not talking to you, even though they're not touching you, even though they're not, they're not acknowledging your existence. That means that they love you because they're still here, aren't they? Why do you need to hear "I love you" so much? You're so needy. You're so emotional. You you ask for too much. Like, damn, I'm here, aren't I? I'm telling you, look at this. Like, watch these videos, y'all, and understand what you are going through. Understand it, what you are tolerating, what you are dealing with, what you are staying for. What is this? Like, what are you, what, what's the gain, y'all? I always need to know the gain. Tell me the gain. Put the gain in the comment section, please. I need a net positive gain for the reason that you're still here. They don't, like, with the kids. Cool. I understand that. Think about those kids. Money. I understand that. Finances. Sometimes fi financial abuse runs rampant with narcissistic people. They want to control you money wise, too. Narcissists are all about control. They want to control how you feel, how you act, how you think, how you smell, how you touch, how you look, how you spend money. They want to control every single aspect of your life. They want to control you like a damn robot. Like, here's my little, here's my little impact. I'm controlling with my remote. Like, you ever seen, you ever seen the movie Click with Adam Sandler? Click. Shut up. Click. Fast forward. Click. Rewind. Click. Better change clothes. Click. They want to control every aspect of you. Just like, you know. They want to control your life. But you are in control of your life. I know a lot of people who watch this are Christian. So you, your life is supposed to be controlled by somebody else? I thought, you like, I thought God gave you this. Free will. He gave you free, did, he, did God give you free will for only, only for you to give it to someone else? To give control of your life to someone else? Did he? I mean, if that's in the Bible somewhere, please put that, please put that quote into the comment section. Please. Please put the quote in there where God says, you know, your free will is gone. I know, I know slavery and stuff like that. I'm talking about, you know, in a relationship, your parents, whatever. You have no free will. You must do, let this person control every aspect of your life. You don't even supposed to serve them. You're just supposed to exist, you know. But that's the lifestyle right there, y'all. This is what you have to tolerate. If you're going to stay in a relationship with a narcissist, this is it right there. This is it right here. You're going to be jealous of your friend. If, if you have friends now, if you have relationships, if you have couple friends and things like that, or you have, you know, your friends, you're growing up and their parents are super supportive, of, uh, super supportive. Of, <sighs> your friends, parents are super supportive of them when your parents can't even give you a compliment. You're going to be grow up jealous of hell and, as hell and envious of other people. And when you get in relationships, you're still going to be jealous and envious of other people's relationships because it looks better than yours. They are better than yours because you are dealing with a narcissist that doesn't love, care, or appreciate you 
the way that you deserve to be loved, cared, and appreciated for. You know, but that's my spill on this, so y'all. Thank y'all for tuning in to another episode. Like and subscribe for more because, like, look, as always, like, you gotta like and subscribe for more because, as always, mental illness is out. Peace.